All right, uh, now we cut across live to the press briefing by GOC NC Eastern Command Lieutenant General R.P. Koleta in Kuwahati. And uh, they have a specific requirement of challenges which are posed by the weather and terrain, particularly in Eastern Command. Uh, what an equipment, its performance output in planes will be completely different than the performance output at 15,000 or 14,000, 3,000. So the aim of having this fish tech here is to get those troops from the forward areas and the manufacturers come together here so that the manufacturers understand what the requirement of troops are and then thereafter they can evolve their problem statement based on which they can develop a product. Similarly, the users, that is our troops in forward areas, they understand what sort of equipment is available in the market, whether it suits their requirement or there is a requirement of carrying out any product improvement, which can be then suggested to the manufacturer. Well, for the first time ever in the Northeast, Eastern Army Command in association with the Assam government is showcasing the latest in defense weapon and equipment technology at the Maniram Dewan Trade Center in Guwahati. The East Tech 2023 is an initiative to create awareness of contemporary technologies and hardware solutions available with Indian defense manufacturers under Raksha Atmanirbhar Bharat to meet ever-evolving operational dynamics in Eastern Command with indigenous, innovative and future technologies. Well, the inauguration ceremony was graced by Bimal Bora, Minister of Industries and Commerce. Lieutenant General R.P. Kalita, General Officer Commanding in Chief Eastern Command, Lieutenant General Manish Ere, General Officer Commanding uh, Gajraj Corps, and other high level dignitaries from the government, military, paramilitary, police, and civil society. The aim of the event is to facilitate Eastern Command in meeting its operational challenges by incorporating contemporary indigenous technology. The first day of the event will be restricted to the defense personnel. It will be open for civilian audience on the second day. Can you know, follow that process and then there, is, there are no uh, delays in the procurement process. Uh, but recently in last about 5-10 years, all the defence procurement processes have been made much more easier than earlier times and it has been made more friendly to the manufacturers as well as the purchasers. Even in sense, you can ask, please give a mic. No, no, he's asking. Sir, so, I said, I am the best from North East Light. So, Sikkim has witnessed one of the worst demonstrations. Army has faced such a thing. So, you would like to know two aspects. Uh, one is, uh, what is the devastation or the tragedy faced by the Army? And how is the Army moving ahead right now to rescue the living operations? We request you, sir. Yeah, no, I like Though I am taking the questions on your list, since you have asked about a natural tragedy which had happened in Sikkim, uh, I would like to answer that because in fact uh, I was in Sikkim and yesterday evening only I came back from Sikkim. And uh, on 4th of, 9th of 3rd and 4th uh, October, the glacial lake outburst which took place was unprecedented. You know, water which was gushing was a height of about 15 to 20 meters from the normal river. So, all along the river, that's the Goma Chu, then the Jibu Chu and uh, Tishta River primarily, till it enters Bangladesh and even within Bangladesh also, there's huge, you know, water and sludge which came. And whatever came in its way, we were all swept away. So, there has been huge damage to the civilian particularly to the infrastructure as well as life. As far as uh, army is concerned, uh, there are 22 people who were swept away, out of which uh, 10 mortal remains we have been able to recover. 12 are still uh, yet to be recovered. And there has been huge damage as far as the infrastructure is concerned, particularly in terms of roads, bridges, the hydroelectric dams which were you know, uh, swept away as also some of the infrastructure, small scale infrastructure projects of army were also damaged which were along the river. So the basic focus has been from 4th of uh, October 
and primarily is to rescue and relief, rescue and relief of the people there who were stuck in the flash flood. As also there are almost 3,000 tourists who have stranded. So unfortunately, because of the weather, past three four days, uh, the evacuation of the tourists could not take place. But yesterday onwards, tourist evacuation has started. Almost 500 people were evacuated yesterday. Today also the process is still on. So basically, aim was to carry out rescue of the people who were stranded, and thereafter provide relief to the people who are in isolated areas. And then thereafter, simultaneously, the process is on to reconstruct the infrastructure that we have. It's going to take time, but I think all agencies that are involved, including the state government, the border roads, the Ministry of Road and Transport, Army, everybody is working in a synergized manner and with single goal of providing succor to the people affected by this flood. Yes, sir, please. Do you want to ask another question? Sir, uh, there is an impending uh, danger of explosives right now in the East Africa because family of the man has been so close. So, how are you tackling the situation? What we did was the moment we got to, we learned about the uh, the fact that a lot of ammunition and explosives were swept away by the floods and they were uh, uh, recovered downstream. So, immediately we informed both the state government, that is Sikkim and uh, West Bengal based on which they issued advisories to the local population. In addition to that, we formed the small, small teams along with the representative of the local state government and police, which went into the villages which were under, situated on the banks of the Trista River, basically to, to make the people aware of uh, the dangers that is posed by these explosives which are there all along the riverbed. And they were advised not to touch them. And our teams have been fanned uh, out and wherever they have gone, they have educated these two uh, local villages. And wherever they have found those unexploded uh, explosives, they were taken care, taken to safe, safe areas, and they were demolished by our experts. You see, we have got the defense manufacturers from all over this country to be here to showcase whatever products they have. And on the sidelines, as the Minister, Honorable Minister of Industry, Sri Bhimal Gora had mentioned, so on the sidelines, they are going to carry out some B2B meetings with the state government. So if they are carried, taken forward, and uh, the industries are motivated to invest in the state, I'm sure it will be of great uh, help to the Assam state. Sir, any special initiatives The whole expo is aimed at uh, promoting make in India. Like I mentioned in my opening speech also, we are also carrying out a lot of hand-holding for the indigenous defense manufacturers. And we have streamlined the processes in case they want to carry out any trials. And we are getting, doing a lot of hand-holding in that case.